All righty, folks, we're going to have a conversation with Anna Kelly, and we're going to reference a conversation I had with Daniel DiMartino Booth, specifically topic number one in that discussion, and that is the importance of killing the Fed put. I believe I was one of the first people to talk about this way back at Jackson Hole. Daniel DiMartino, Daniel DiMartino Booth has come out and said the same thing about a year ago. I still don't think a lot of people understand why it is so important for Jerome Powell to kill that thing. So we're going to talk to Anna. She's just going to give it to us straight. Anna, how you doing? I'm doing great. Good to be here. Absolutely. So did you by chance see that interview with uh, Daniel DiMartino Booth? I did. I watched it in its entirety. I really um, value Danielle's opinions and her perspective on things. She was a Fed insider. Um, I believe she worked for the Atlanta Fed at some point. Dallas Fed. Um, Dallas Fed. Dallas Fed. I'm I'm sorry. And and she has a book that she wrote called Fed Up, which is a, yep. a definite read. recommendation for reading. Um, and she she talks about the um, basically the manipulation of markets by the Fed, not allowing natural forces of a com commercial um, economy, essentially, to basically allow the good companies to rise and the bad companies to fall and natural cycles of, you know, expansion um, coming to a peak and then slowly starting to decline and then a recession and recovery. Those things are just natural um, yeah. cycles of the business cycle and the real estate cycle. And because of Fed manipulation of rates and quantitative easing and quantitative tightening, they basically make the expansions go longer than they should, rewarding companies that really are not profitable for too long, creating big asset bubbles, and then creating astronomical crashes um, when, when there's fallout. And so her book is very good to talk about from a Fed insider, what they do, the mistakes they've made, and how they need to make changes going forward. And I believe in that book, she talks about the Fed put as well. Yep. Um, and there's two other really good books that kind of talk about it. One is by Nomi Prinz, and I think it's called Permanent Distortion. And then the other one is Chris Leonard, The Lords of Easy Money. Yeah. And the three of those books will give you a lot of um, information on kind of what it's like behind the scenes from people that have been in the Fed and the lessons they've learned about the mistakes they've made, the Fed put being one of them. So I agreed with Danielle um, that the Fed needs to put an end to the Fed put, which is basically the Fed saying, uh-oh, we caused some pain. We don't want the big companies to collapse and have pain. So we're going to bail them out on the back end. Um, we're going to kind of put off the you know, the market fallout and and prop some companies up to make sure that they don't fall quite as badly. I, I actually, I look at the Fed put as actually more nasty than that. I look at the Maybe. Fed put, and, and maybe the Fed put didn't start this way, but certainly the last couple of times it's been deployed, it felt this way. Again, I I don't pretend to be a Fed insider. I just pretend, pretend to be some guy that looks at the economy every day. Yeah, you and, and me both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So really what the Fed put is to me is something that Wall Street has come to depend on. That yes, is step sure. one, and that is where this all goes sideways. Because Wall Street is – Profit oriented, greedy. If it works once, they do it again. They add on leverage, they go to the wall. And what I think Wall Street learned is if they add on enough leverage and the trade goes bad, the Fed, AKA the American people, will bail their ass out. True. Yes. So, yes. in essence, and it's that's a what tool. I mean by yeah. the Fed comes in with actions that yes. prevent that massive fallout that punishes those who took too much risk yes. in an era of, you know, irrational exuberance, essentially lets them fail and then, yeah. then starts over. Yeah. The Fed put basically boosts the markets up so that they they know that they can take that risk that, quite frankly, let's not pretend the Fed is incentivizing them to do oh, on the way so. up. They're yeah, keeping yeah. rates super low. They're giving free money in different ways to, to incentivize companies. Essentially, initially, it was to invest in employment and in future um, infrastructure yeah. and things that are going to create production in the economy. But they know that very little of that money is actually spent for that. Most of it's spent on financial engineering 
uh, stock buybacks and making risky bets that create better returns. And so they're incentivizing, hey, market, um, we're giving you money. Now go out and, and create right. growth in some whatever way you want to do it. And then, oh, by the way, if things start to crash, we'll bail you out. It's like this secret understanding yeah. that we can take risk. They want us to take risk. And when the, if things collapse, we know that there will be uh, a, a new tool of some sort that will support the markets and keep things from being as bad as they can. And so, you yeah. know, we saw that in 2008 and, and 2009. And I was actually there on the front lines working at AIG when the Fed bailed out AIG and the Fed bailed out many other companies and gave big banks money and incentives to help bail them out. And it was to the dollars, the taxpayer. Now, eventually they got paid back most of that, but that was yep. kind of the biggest, most headline making, what I would call a Fed put was sure. they created new rescue programs. Um, and they've done it in small ways that haven't hit the media multiple times as well. Sure. Yeah. And I guess the biggest test for me, because again, I'm, I'm hoping they kill it, is going to be the commercial real estate market. And we're already seeing the pain. It's still the first inning, a lot more coming. Um, the good news is that for most for most of us, the Americans, the average American is not involved with the commercial real estate. It's it's insurance companies, hedge funds, you know, pension funds, some syndications and all of that. Uh, but a lot of that's going to be equity that's wiped out. The underlying yes. debt will certainly take haircuts, but it's nothing like the 40, 50, 60% haircuts we saw in the residential collapse. So, right. you know, my hope is uh, they stay on the sidelines. I know they've done some things, right? They've encouraged banks to work with their borrowers and yes. they've encouraged extend and pretend, but I don't want to see the Fed buy commercial backed securities or take assets on their balance sheet. Uh, that would be, that would be wild. That'd be unacceptable. It would be wild, but Michael, I I don't put it past them. You know, oh, I don't either. They, I'm, and, I'm, and here's here's the reality: it's easy to point blame, and when things really collapse, blame is thrown all around. It's because of yep. you know rich, greedy banks, rich, greedy investors, syndicators, um, the rich, greedy Fed. You know, there's there's going to be a lot of blame thrown around. But the reality is, our financial system, again, I I cannot stress enough is sufficiently um, complex and intertwined such that when one domino falls, it can create a doom loop and things can yep. get worse and worse and it can impact lots of people, not just the big corporations if things fail. And so part of the reason that the Fed has this put where essentially they say, you know, we're, we're doing something the economy is faltering, the markets are faltering, banks may fail, companies may fail, hedge funds may fail, real estate investors may fail. What they try to look at is how big could the fallout be and how many players will be impacted and will it put the U.S. economy into a deep, deep, deep recession or a deep, deep, deep depression that could take us a decade or two to get out of? And if they basically look at the picture and say, if we don't provide some help um, a rescue plan for this asset class or for this particular um, type of company, let's just say the banks um, that that hold a lot of commercial real estate debt or CMBS, um, commercial mortgage-backed securities. They're basically like the residential mortgage-backed securities of, of 2008, but on the commercial side or collateral loan obligations. Basically what they can do is they can come in and say, um, Banks, we want you to work things out and we'll buy this debt from you. And so you don't have to take the big losses and they start buying them up and holding them on their balance sheet, just like you said before. And yep. then the hope is they can they can unwind them, they can work them out. And eventually when things get back to normal, they'll sell them back off yep. the balance sheet and everything will come back to normal. So it's kind of this backstop. Um, and I will tell you that with the commercial real estate market, about 35 to 50 percent, depending on you know whose data you look at, of commercial real estate loans are held by these regional banks, not the teeny yep. tiny banks, not the big, big banks. They only hold about seven to nine percent of commercial paper. So what the Fed knows is that if commercial real estate starts to take a substantial hit because they keep rates higher for longer and cap rates start to adjust and, and values fall and, and these operators can't refinance their debt, that debt for those operators wipes them out, okay? They have to hand back over the keys to the bank. 
their investors lose all their equity. The bank loses that asset. It's not just that the property and the investors that own the property have struggle, but the banks, when, when they hold a liability for someone else, it's an asset for them, Michael, as you know. And so when they have to write down that mortgage, just like SVB and Signature Bank had to write down the value of you know treasury bonds, for example, now they're having to write down and say, okay, we're taking these paper losses. Well, now their assets go down while their liabilities stay high. That could trigger reserve requirements. Now you have to raise more money. Now the the Fed can stop this and say, hey, we'll give you par value for what these things are rather than what they really are. Like they've already done the Fed put for the yep. banks essentially with that program, um, the bank rescue program earlier this year. But they could do the same thing and say, OK, we're going to we're going to give you credit for this or buy it. But if they don't, more bank failures will follow. And then yep. there's more lo losses, more potential runs on the bank, more people that want their cash. And it's this doom loop that will continue to happen. The Fed doesn't want that. They want pain. They want to kill inflation, but they don't want economic collapse. And so it's easy for me as an American taxpayer to say, I want the Fed put to go away. And I think that it should um, in general, and, and it should be like a last resort, kind of the, the Fed being the lender of last resort, if you will. Um, but they have created an economic system that's so complex that if they don't have some kind of tools to bail us out of temporary pain, yeah. things will collapse and they'll get really bad. And so you know, I know the truth of both of those realities, and it's and and the Fed doesn't necessarily have an easy answer. I hope that in the future, and I think I share this with Danielle from listening to her speak many times in, in her books, is that the Fed learns that they have to not have such easy money and easy low rates for the future that create these false economic booms in the first place these you know quick rapid horrible falls that create the need of the fed put and that they allow economic forces to work themselves out naturally with less intervention along the way so that zombie companies are not rewarded with astronomical values but they start to fail because they're cash poor um and that things just aren't as high highs or as low lows because they have better um more even monetary policy going forward that doesn't spark the asset bubbles in the first place. And if that happens, the Fed put won't be needed anymore. Yeah. So I guess where I'm kind of to wrap this one up, I think we both will agree that a of some kind of backstop or bailout or whatever you want to call it on the commercial real estate certainly is possible. Yes. I think I think we both agree it's it's it could get that bad. Yes. But would you go as far as to say it's probable? You know, Michael, if if the Fed keeps rates, so I, I was looking at a lot of statistics in the last few few days of kind of real time where we are. And right now there's about a close to a trillion dollars of commercial real estate coming due in the next year and close to a trillion in the following year um, in 2025 and then a little bit less than that in 2026. So the biggest risk to commercial real estate and the that that shifts the probabilities into a high probability um scenario of of a lot more of these commercial bank collapse commercial loan collapses and then from that commercial bank collapses is how many of these trillion dollars of loans this year and maybe next year depending on how high the fed keeps rates for how long how many of them can get worked out and the workouts Agreed. are not easy because Although the Fed can tell a bank, we want you to work these out, and maybe there's some backdoor backstop to the banks, um, just like there was in this bank rescue program earlier this year. And they say, we're not going to make you have to raise reserves. Like you just keep these assets on the books, allow them to stretch their payment out longer, extend it a little longer. Since you know somewhere between 30 and 50 percent ish or so are held by regional banks, they could help the regional banks to hold on to those assets and say, we know values are tanking because of rates, but if you'll hold on for another year or two, rates will come back relatively low so that refinances can happen and they can stop this doom loop. I think okay. that something like that 
is pretty likely. When okay. you look at things like commercial backed mortgage securities, they're in a pool of securities owned by a third party and those loans cannot be modified. Doesn't matter if the Fed says to modify them. They don't have the legal rights to modify them. And right. so a lot of those and it's somewhere like 30% in, you know, in some um some data of, of commercial real estate loans are are in these CMBS loans, more so in, in office and other spaces than multifamily, those I think are still going to have some pain. So I would say the probability of a major crisis in the next year or two is high unless the Fed creates a backstop for the banks. And that is that Fed put that everybody's hoping we don't have. Um, yeah. As a commercial real estate investor, um, as people who've in, you know invested in in deals and retirement plans, et cetera, as much as I hate the Fed put, I hope that because they helped create this mess of high inflation and high rates and 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 it's kind of an artificial hit to a fundamentally good asset class and asset value, especially when you think of like apartments. Um it's sad to think that all of them are wiped out. Yes, there were some risky bets that were taken, no doubt. And risk needs to be punished um, on the downside and rewarded on, on the upside. So, uh, But the reality is there's a lot of great assets, Michael, that shouldn't collapse other than the fact that their loans are calling being called due during during this time. So I think it's a it is a major risk to the economic system that people don't realize. It's We've yeah. only seen the beginning of commercial real estate fallout, especially in the office sector and the impact that will have on the banks um, and the trickle down effect of how that will you know, make banks either fail or pull back lending going forward and slow the economy um, could have tremendous impact on the American people in a negative way if it's allowed to happen. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to watch. I think this gets really exciting next summer. Right next summer, <laughs> it's it's going to be wild to watch. Anna, where can people find you? Great, you can find me here every week on your show. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly REI Mom and my new website at AnnaKellyInvesting.com. Thank you so much.